My mother's here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, that's great, Sherry. Let's do it. Uh, points? Those any good? Well, sure. I'll take a few. Why not? Okay, I'll hold. Hi, guys. What's up? Howdy. Well, Servo's buying a duplex yep. in Philadelphia. Uh -huh. It's a real drive-by cutie. Wow, doing? that's a terrific idea. I'll Thank tell you, you why. Because you can take party... Wait a minute. How? That's easy, Mike. Turns out you can purchase one of these beauties with no cash. With no cash? Uh-huh. It's called the no-cash method. Old world charm galore. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, that, that's great, Tom. But, yep. you know, just a cursory glance at this shows me that you're going to be losing $2,000 a month. Oodles of curb appeal. Jeez, that's a paper loss, Mike. Try to relax. I write it off my income. You don't have any income. So I income average. Jeez, you'd be doing this, too, if you had any cojones. Such a drive-by cutie. You're going to prison for sure. We'll be right back. Oh, Sherry's back. Sherry? Good. Let's lock it. You're a cutie. You are. You're a yeah, drive-by yeah, cutie. Yeah. Yes, you're right. cojones. <laughs> Locked into a 30-year fix, then I sign the papers, and boom! Not Looks only like am I a homeowner, meat. I'm uh, actually making money in the squirrel. deal. Really? Can you reach it? I got a monthly mortgage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 whoa, there's your smell. Yeah. And don't you dare kill this boyfriend like you did the last one, Clayton. Uh, yes, Mother. Uh, hi, guys. Mom has a date tonight. <laughs> Clayton, be a dear, get that? Sure. Like, there's nothing else I need to do. I'm a personal slave. That's probably why you had me. <laughs> It's open. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, Mom, that guy is here. I'm Sandy. You must be Pearl's boy. Hi. What are you doing? I'm sewing the head of a piglet onto a fish. Oh, oh yeah. Hobbies are great. Oh. I do model trains. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Excuse me. Your mother is one fine woman, Clay. Just between you and me, I wouldn't be expecting her home tonight. Mother! Hi, Sandy. Pearl, you are looking. <sighs> well, looks like you two have had a chance to get to know each other. Okay, listen up, people. Mother is going out with her friend Sandy tonight, so Art, you're in charge. Bro, oh, come on. No way. Sure, Pearl. Now you have yourself a good time and don't worry about a thing. Oh, man. Oh, man. So what Art says goes, people, and that means you too, Clayton. Okay, you big babies, here are the rules. Go to bed now and don't get up or I'll put your hands in a garbage disposal. No! Shut up, kid. Look, Crow, there's no way. I'm bigger than you and I'm older than you. There's yeah. no way you're my babysitter. Yeah. Just for that, you wash my feet. Crow. Shut up. Crow. Shut up. Crow. Shut up. Crow. Go to bed. Crow. You shall live. Thank you. Shut up. Bye-bye, sweetie. I'll be back whenever I feel like it and there's no number where you can reach me. Ciao. No, oh, mother, no! <laughs> oh, well, he's not the first oily man that's taken mom to the mat. <laughs> Your experiment this week is a Rondo Hatton vehicle called Brute Man. And there's also a short. Aren't you supposed to be in bed by now? Get back into bed, you. Would you stop? Would you stop? Oh, what have you kids done? What have you done, you stupid kid? <laughs> Jackass company. <laughs> 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 
the Bill Clinton story. <laughs> the chicken of tomorrow in a deadly battle against the chicken of today. Dedicated to the chickens who lost their lives in the Great Chicken War. Wait a minute. Men and women breeding better poultry? What kind of sick experiment is going on here? You know, this music helps chickens breed. It's kind of like the Luther Vandross of chickens here. <laughs> Buck, baby. Chickens are dining in front of a Susan Rothstein mural. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, whether the chicken or the egg came first is still the subject of a lot of good-natured debate. No, it isn't. But one thing there's no argument about. Chickens and eggs are the most widely grown farm products in the country. There's not a single county in the United States that doesn't raise them. <laughs> Daddy, must you sit in, in dinner? Years, this poultry business has become a moneymaker for farmers. Three billion dollars a year. And it's second only to dairying and beef cattle raising. Woohoo! We're going on a trip! Hey, where are we going? <laughs> Chickens are shipped to the set of Oklahoma. I think the fella in white really likes us, Susan. Ah. Just to give you an idea of the size of this poultry business, Americans eat 140 million eggs a day. That's one for every man, woman, and child in the nation. These are your chickens on drugs. And chickens? Well, the per capita consumption is 25 pounds a year. Help me. Which means just about everybody must eat chicken at least once a week. Yes, indeed. Chickens and eggs are a big business. <laughs> Come on, that tickles. And like big business, there's a serious effort to improve the product. We're removing mealworms. A three-year program to breed a better chicken is now being carried on. Fellow poultry men, our cherished freedoms are threatened from all sides. I don't think I've got what it takes to be the chicken of tomorrow. I'd like to be the chicken of tomorrow, but how can I be more the man of today? And on large and small farms everywhere, the search for a better chicken goes on. There it is! Wait! No! There! Come along with us on a visit to one of the large breeding farms. Woohoo! And see how the old-time barnyard flock has grown up. If you're nice, we'll hook you up to the milking machine. Of course, they have to be hatched before they can grow up. So, let's start at the beginning, in the incubator. I'm in the incubator now. Good chicks come from good eggs. Thank you, young man. Fertile eggs from hens with a pedigree. Oh, pardon the me. pedigree is important because in the search for a better chicken, it's breeding that counts. Hey, can I go to the bathroom? Oh, stay in there. Oh, come on, can I go home? Oh, the door's locked. I've seen the episode where the eggs come too fast and she starts putting them in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Some eggs are sent to solitary. It's a far cry from the warm breast of a broody hen to a modern incubator, but actually the conditions are very much the same. The temperature is held at 99 degrees to approximate the body heat of the hen. And this fellow. And a forced draft gives plenty of ventilation. This one unit holds 85,000 eggs. One bathroom for all of them. So. <laughs> Really? Did you ever notice the old hen turning the eggs over occasionally as she said? Oh, yeah, who hasn't? Here, the same thing is done automatically. Ride the wild mouse. And now we'll wait 21 days for things to happen. Oh, you can't wait for things to happen, young man. You've got to make them happen. But thanks to some very special photography, we can see what's happening. Oh, this is going to be hot, hot, hot. <laughs> By the end of the third day, the embryo in the egg has begun to form. Mark calling Austin. Hey, I'm trying to sleep in here. Another three days, and the heart has started to beat. Say, can I have a bigger egg? That is one bloodshot eye. After ten days, you can see the chick itself beginning to take shape. Oh, wait, that's my silly putty. A few more days, and that mass has some resemblance to a baby chick. You kind of squint. I'll dry eye up. <laughs> and finally, the fully developed chick is ready to start breaking out of its shell. Sticks of dynamite are arranged carefully around the perimeter. At this stage, Mother Nature gives it a sharp spike on the end of its beak. Sharp enough to poke a hole through the shell. I'll, I'll be out in a... Uh, little by little, the chick works its way around the shell. Hold it, I'll be out in a minute. I'll just take it a little longer than I thought. Come on down and meet everybody. Oh. <laughs> Finally, the 
Only the end of the shell is weakened enough so the chick can push it out. Yeah, right, you push it out. Oh, Jesus, this is hard. Oh, oh, oh. I hate it when people tape their own deliveries. Aren't there supposed to be pantyhose in there? Wait, I'm coming. I'm not done. Oh. Struggling, it tumbles out, exhausted but free. Whoa, what did I do it last now night? For several hours, and then get up on shaky legs and begin to live for a few weeks, only to be eaten. Honey, old-time poultrymen who've been in the business for many years say they still get a mighty kick out of the miracle of the birth of a baby chick. Hey guys, it's God. <laughs> the ratio of pullets and cockerels among chicks is about fifty-fifty. Great. Oh, you may order straight run chicks. Then again, you may order all pullets. Life is great. It stretches out in front of me like an eternity. Sexing the chicks or separating the males from the females is a highly specialized trade. Yeah, for pervs. Whoa, Milton Merle there. <laughs> it calls for long experience and training. Another well, The experts seldom miss. They can't afford to miss because when you order pullets, you want all pullets, mm -hmm. not a few cockerels mixed in. Hey, why are we screeching? Mm, garage sale. Mm, goodwill. Mm, save for the kids. Mm. It's nice. Uh, you know, it's small. The walls are neutral. Oh, hi, Cindy. I'm so glad I'm in your group. This is going to be a fun group. 40-piece chicken nuggets to go. <laughs> Wait a minute, you may be saying. Why am I watching Can this? those chicks just out of the shell be sent without food on trips of a day, two days, even three? You bet. Indeed they can. Oh. Nature That's thought right. about that, too. The baby chick has within its little body enough unabsorbed yolk to nourish it for 72 hours, three days and nights of travel, with each chick carrying its own lunch. Then they turn on each other. Nevertheless, speed is essential. And it's here that the motor truck plays such a big part in poultry raising. I said speed is essential. In fact, the industry couldn't exist as it does today without motor transportation and the petroleum industry that supplies the quality fuel and lubricants that make this high-speed transportation possible. The unholy alliance between big oil and big chickens. That guy's escaping disguised as a chicken. Chickens! <laughs> but to get back to our baby chicks, I have a cute picture, but it's really not the scientific way to handle chicks. How many are you sitting on? One dad went a little nuts this Easter. Their immediate destination after leaving the incubator... Broadway! ...is the Bruder House. Designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Here a stove is needed to keep the temperature up around 95 degrees for the first week. Almost any kind of stove will do, one of the most common being a kerosene stove. Here I come! Well, they mingle, get to know each other a little. The circular guard is to keep the chicks near the heat and prevent floor draft. There are concerts at the gazebo. In a few days, the litter should be covered with paper so the chicks can't eat it. They need plenty of food and lots and lots of water. Individual counseling is provided. From now on, their main job in life is to eat and grow. Eat and grow forever. After the first few days, the paper can be removed. Except for the sports section. The floor should be covered with litter to keep the floor warm and absorb the droppings. Peat moss, fine cut straw, peanut shells, ground corn cobs, or anything that will pack rather closely is good for litter. Cigarette butts, hair, beer cans. <laughs> After the chicks are two or three weeks old, they can be allowed out of doors if the weather's good. And if they've completed their lessons. At from eight to ten weeks, the pullets being reared for egg production are ready to be transferred from the brooder house to the range. And you know what that means. <laughs> range life is good for chickens, but there are... What? 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 What's going on? Really? What? 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 You? Huh? What? Range shelters should be fairly small, holding not more than 100 birds. Or migrant workers. The shelter protects them from the sun, and gives them a safe place to roost out of the way of rodents. Rodents! Ah! Go, 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 go. Proper diet, 
and plenty of water are required. Oh, heavens, I'm so fat. I just look at chicken feed and I gain weight. <laughs> Does this taste funny to you? A good grass sod is a must to give the birds an abundant supply of fresh, tender leaves. A selection of ciders and spring water should be kept on hand. Normandy. Rain shelters ought to be spaced about 75 to 100 feet apart so the hens won't go wandering off to gossip with other flocks. You know how chickens are. Yeah, they own everything. Bastards. Oh, it's a fine life, this life on the range. But like all good things, it must come to an end. Time to die. And when they're about six months old, the pullets are ready to move to the laying house to fulfill one of their main functions in life. I can't. I've got a tiny headache. Remember the old hen house? The one with the rats? It's now a hotel, a pullet hotel. Rooms by the hour. Every room with an outside exposure. Joey the Coxcomb Tortelli. Ricky the Bantam Chavitello. Jimmy Crazy Cock Puccini. Or if you prefer the bungalow type, we've got that too. 400 feet of it. Altogether, room for thousands of guests. Or chickens, tip. But seriously, housing your chickens is important. Whether they're egg or meat producers, they ought to have three or four square feet per bird, depending on the breed. Open your hymnals to number 325. They've got to have roosts, too, but they huddle pretty close together, and two or three birds can perch on one foot of space. Everybody, soil and green is made from chickens! One of the most important advances ever made in poultry raising is the trap nest. The bird can enter the nest easily to lay her egg, but she can't get out again until you let her out. There's no point. This is funny. This simple <laughs> device permits you to know which birds lay which eggs and to keep a record of each hen's egg production. Which seems excessively anal retentive. The whole secret of profitable chicken raising is to make them produce more than they cost to feed. Oh, you think I can wear these pants out tonight? hen that lays 210 eggs a year and eats 70 pounds of feed is giving you three eggs for every pound you feed her. She will live. Keep that one. She's worth millions. But if she eats 70 pounds of feed and only lays 70 eggs a year, you better send her to the market or to your dinner table. Or put a warning slip on her desk. And it's the trap nest that lets you keep a record of how well each hen is laying. I'll have an egg tomorrow, man, I swear. Like this, too, that help in developing the chicken of tomorrow. Here, go have a little fun. You can't take it for granted that every hen is earning her keep, even though laying an egg ought to be easy for any chicken. That's what you think, big boy. Wow, that was weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh... Anyhow, the trap nest the answer to discovering which are the lazy hens. And this is a good place to point out a few facts about eggs. Stop throwing them at my car. The temperature of an egg when laid is over 100 degrees. Oh, it's true. Every minute it's left in a hot nest in a hot hen house takes away some of its moisture and freshness. So put your mouth under a chicken. <laughs> Gather your eggs often. Three or four times a day. Make sure to put them all in one basket. And they'll cool out twice as fast in a wire basket as in a pail. These are headed for the driving range. Clean eggs bring a better price than dirty ones. And when you gather them often, they don't get a chance to get dirty. That's uh, filthy Fred there collects them. <laughs> the secret of profitable eggs is to cool them quickly and keep them cool. Yeah, I'm cool, baby. And keep them clean. Lick your eggs. Or have a friend lick them. <laughs> when you've got as many birds to look after as this hatchery, you're pretty receptive to labor-saving devices. Like wagons. And this carrier system is one of the best. It runs the length of the building and is used to carry feed to the different pens. It can be used also for gathering up manure. Saves a lot of back-breaking work. Hey, pal, feed me, then clean up my poops. As your appetizers, I'll be back to get your drink orders, ladies. Another labor saver is the automatic watering trough. It makes certain there's always fresh water for the birds to drink. They're all wearing Rembrandt hats. <laughs> Still another handy gadget is this grating machine. Grating! Feed the eggs in, and the machine separates them by weight. Uh, that one's clean, right? Can... Eggs are complicated. They should cost like $100 each. The first group will average 24 ounces to the dozen, which Go. is the most profitable size. Go. The next, 23 and a half ounces. The next, 23, and so on. Some eggs don't even exist. 
So you can see why egg farming is so fascinating. Mm. Well, besides being a good egg layer, the chicken of tomorrow will be an improved meat producer. It's goofus and gallant. <laughs> Here's an example of the progress that's been made already. This could be your drumstick. This is the number to call. Notice how breeding has increased the amount of meat on the breast. Hey, 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 fat Albert. Look at that drumstick. Full of salmonella. This bird was fattened in the same length of time. Hey, clean your and fingers. The same amount of feed as the other one. Make your own guess as to which is the more profitable to raise. Well, aren't chickens with good self-esteem equally important? And Ooh. when the chicken of tomorrow gets to the dinner table, its advantages are still more apparent. These chickens were smoking in bed. May I have a piece of my own white meat, please? <laughs> oh, thanks for the generous helping. Jeez. Uh, Dad, if you could carve a little faster, I'm kind of hungry. Yes, chicken sliced to the width of one electron. These must be models portions here. <laughs> for you, Miss Moss, and for you, Miss Taylor. Here we go. Yes, it's chicken. Glorious American chicken sliced the American way. Carry in your wallet. But it's your pocketbook that profits most when you send this bird to market. We bring you now to market. A unique method of marketing chickens and eggs that's grown in popularity in recent years is the auction. Such as here at Sotheby's. The first one is said to have been the Hunterdon and County Auction at Flemington, New Jersey. Now that's an urban myth. But the idea has spread to all parts of the country. The chicken shortage of 1937. The farmers bring their crates of eggs to market the day before the auction. Alternatively, they may bring their eggs early the day of the auction. On auction day, the buyers gather to purchase eggs and poultry at prices openly arrived at. Bid two, two, two over there. Two the bid. It's seventy. You're adorable. Seventy and a quarter and a half. It's seventy and a half. Two. One's a bid. One, one's a bid. One and a quarter. Believe me, I have a one and a half. Three quarters a bid. Two, two's a bid. Two and a quarter. It's two and a quarter over there. He's drunk. Two and a quarter. Here's seventy's a bid. Believe me, seventy and a quarter. Believe me, I have a seventy and a half. Three quarters a bid. One, one's a bid. One and a quarter. One and a half. One and a half. One seventy-five. Do I get one seventy-five? It's over there they go. It's one seventy. And after the eggs and poultry are sold, once again the motor truck plays its big role. All right, come on, sing, sing, row, row, row. You're not singing. <laughs> Hundreds of live chickens can be speeded on their way to the dressing plant. The dressing plant sounds like fun. I want a new hat. <laughs> One truck can handle thousands of eggs and take them anywhere there's a market. Even to the Texaco station. <laughs> Speed and flexibility. That's what the industry must have in its transportation. You? And that's exactly what the motor truck, fueled and lubricated with quality petroleum products, offers. Buddy, buddy, wake up. Any poultryman, and he'll tell you that the industry could not flourish as it's doing today without the efficient fleets of trucks that whisk baby chicks to waiting farmers to be killed, rush chickens to the grocers and butchers' shelves to be killed, and speed fresh eggs to be killed to your breakfast table. Did America really need to be sold on the automotive industry at this point? There's no driver. The chickens are taking over. <laughs> Uh, should I be sitting astride you with my warm and nurturing hindquarters or anything? No, no, I'm just fine. Oh, How do you do, Crow? Hey, you I... seen Tom around anywhere? Hi, Mike. I'm in here. <laughs> hey, Tom, how you doing? You okay in there? Oh, more than okay, Mike. I'm floating in a sea of warm nutrients, and I'm all set to begin my 21-day gestation period. I want to experience the miracle of chicken birth, Mike. Yeah, plus there's a huge market for them egg-hatching movies. Mm. So we got uh, Cambot filming the whole thing. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. Uh, you know, it really is beautiful, too, Tom. But, you know, I wish you told me about it before you did this. Really? Why? Well, you're the, uh, the only one that... Hello? 
Yeah, go on with your story. Well, I was going to say, you know, three weeks without you, I mean, you're the only one I depend on for any kind of urbane conversation. Well, I understand, Mike, but it's too late now. Just put me in a warm place, soak me in some enzymes. And no, be you know what? Ready. i got to get you out of there. I can't no, no, live Mike, without Mike, you. Mike, I'm not ready to hatch. No, be careful. Fully be careful. Mike, I don't please, 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 oh, oh, oh. What a mess. <laughs> we'll be right back. I'll go get a whole bunch of paper towels. Oh. Right, right. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh. Hey, what's this movie called, man? It's called The Brute Man. The <laughs> Two Brute Man. <laughs> man. Hey, man. It's a good one. Ah. I'm being followed by a brute shadow. Ooh, Randy Brewer as Rondo Hatton as the brute. I'm working up a Rondo thirst. <laughs> oh, he's in Moomin Shants. Uh, Rondo, we're just doing the credits here. Uh, could you just... R Rondo... R d He's reminiscent of a tall dwarf. <laughs> he really hasn't done anything brutish at all so far. Yeah. Mom, I want the light on in the hall. <laughs> Attention all cars. That's a lot of cars. Attention all cars. General alarm. Kill your owners. <laughs> Car 22, go to 733 Spring Avenue. It's a 341. That is all. Car 22, we'll go. Screw it. Let's go to the Skyway Lounge. 341. Yeah, the man says murder. I may have to use my large face on him. Come on. Take, take our word for it, a police car. Ah, festive decorative lighting adorns the downtown. I gotta pass some Rondo. Seems kind of bleak so far. Everybody talk me, can't hear words say. Pete Sampras! <laughs> wow. wow. Imagine this movie in a drive-in. <laughs> hey, it's not a tuition, it's a cover charge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, does anybody know where the victory dance is? I can't stop. <laughs> I am drawn to dance. One and two and three and what and left and shift. Oh, oh him and his college buddies went bobbing for anvils. <laughs> I gotta get me some crab puffs. Hey, one of the long riders is here. Uh, do you have our bio grades? <laughs> <laughs> ah, forget it. Looks like there's a wait. <laughs> Ah, see, it's it's college. Collegiate law. Uh, <laughs> Boy, those no brute man laws are really starting to pinch. Yeah. Well, you just can't get enough around a walking, can you? Mm -mm. Well, he headed straight to Thelma Lou's house. Mm. Doing all right for himself. A nice colonial with an assumable. Well, party, Jones. Thanks a lot. I did not bring any Everclear to pour into Wapatui. Thanks, John. It was just like old times. Yes, the old crowd and everything. And <laughs> good old Hampton's still on the winning side. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget we have your lunch tomorrow. Oh, yes, one o'clock at the Carlton. I'll be there. Right. Good, good night. night. Good night. I'm so glad you're here. You come back soon. Oh, we will. Good Thank night. You. Oh, I don't need any help, by the way. I just got to go scrape pate off everything in the house, you pigs. Bye. Joe, do you have my pencil? Who is it? It's me. Satchmo. Al Moffat. How She's laced up tighter than a catcher's mitt. Wow. <laughs> Hello, Joe. What do you know? Just got back from the Broadway show. Ta-da! You're not Hal Moffat. Yes. You didn't sit on a toffet. Objects on my face may appear closer than they no. really are. Stay away from me. I won't hurt you. No. No, stay away. <laughs> Lift up where belong. Oh, I get it. Uh, no, I don't. Either way. Hmm. Well, should be room at the restaurant by now. Chiropractor on rampage. Professor Cushman was laid to rest in a tiny battery-powered car. <laughs> uh, hello, this thing on? Can you hear me? Hello. Be 
on the lookout for Rondo. He's slightly carbonated, so you can slam him down fast. Attention, all cars, District 17. All cars, District 17. The 341 suspect mentioned in broadcast number nine. You'll recall. Reported surrounded in Waddell Street. 700 block. Move in. Today's lunch menu. This brute man sounds horrible. Where can I hide? Oh, oh wait, I am brute man. I cornered myself, and no one's even chasing me. Exit! Stage left, even! It's miracles. So, the sound of a siren beckoned men from the sea, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Not that. It's oh. a different sort of girl. Tippy, tippy, tippy toe. I just have a very strong feeling he's here. Can you trust my instincts for a minute, please? You know, if this were a planet where apes evolved from men, this is how you'd probably get in your house. <laughs> Keep everybody back. All right, everybody's back. Well, I could have done that. (laughs) All right, let's get back here. No end is near, and so I face the final curtain. Boy, this mall didn't work, did it? Late for my lesson. I'll be right there, Mrs. Glasser. The police are after me. Do not look up. Do not attempt to look up. the best use of manpower. Oh, you you want to hold that fermato a little longer in the left hand there. Um. Oh, great, he's in Van Clyburn's apartment. He looks like an Easter Island statue. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap, so if you could keep it down out there. Honey, we really need to get a duplicate key. <laughs> They need a bigger place. You know, Brute's trying to work on his play. She's in there. Women are drawn to me. I still got it. Who is it? It's the plumber. I've come to fix the sink. Don't turn on the light. It's me, Barry White, baby. You? What do you want? Keep quiet. If you're a burglar, I'm afraid there isn't much here for you to steal. I'll see if I can find something. I'm not a burglar. I'm a hot dog. Then what do you want? It sounded like burglar. You're not afraid of me? Well, I'm a little nervous, I guess, but why should I be afraid of you? There they are. Who? Clog dancers. Come in. Are you in trouble? Yes, they're after me. He's in here. Go into the bedroom. Wow. <laughs> do as I say. Yes, ma'am. Order me around. Well, I escaped to the right apartment. <laughs> Just a minute. Go into the bedroom. Yes. Have you seen a man around here? Well, no, I haven't seen anyone. (laughs) Take a look in there. Oh, this is so legal. She is too much woman for me, man. All right, show's over. Nothing for me to see here. I'll just be about my business then. Thank you. There's no one in there. You sure you haven't seen anybody? Yes, I'm sure. Come on. Jerry Lee Lewis moved in upstairs. (laughs) Amazing. I haven't spoken to another human for years, and now this. (laughs) Wow. Oh, right in the store. (laughs) Let's see, where was I? Oh, 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 holy, holy night. The stars. Hmm, the typewriter's making weird noises. Everybody says he looks like me. Gotta snag me some Jimmy Hats Prano. I just drop off my prescription. He's one of those weird guys who hangs around a college scene long after he graduates. Yeah, sad. <laughs> Welcome back to 1910 woman was murdered in the same way as the other four victims. Authorities have issued a warning to all citizens to be on the lookout for this fiend. Dobie! As far as the police know, he only appears at night. 
He is a large, heavy-set man, usually wearing a black coat and hat. Descriptions of the creeper have been submitted to headquarters, but these vary to such an extent that it's hard to give an accurate picture of the man's face. Oh, come on, what did the twins the last do? Scene, he was on a tenement rooftop near the waterfront. He was tanning. And now turning to the other news of the day. Jimmy! Good morning, Mr. Haskins. Leave that radio alone. Wow. Sweep up the place. You getting paid to work, not to entertain yourself. Okay. Uh, that creeper guy murdered somebody again last night. Oh, murders, detectives, gangsters. <laughs> That's all you think about. Get the broom. I think about okay. sex, too. Yeah, eat me a hateful old fossil, signed Jimmy. Hey. Hey, the brute has nice fourth grade cursive. Signed, not the brute. Yeah? I didn't say anything. Where did this come from? Somebody stuck it under the door. Uh, I hate customers. Don't you think it's kind of funny? Taking <laughs> a note under the door? No. Go to hell. Don't go trying to make a mystery out of it. Piss off. Somebody probably too busy to pick up the stuff. Could be the creeper. Creeper, creeper, creeper. <laughs> you give me the creep. Single. Well, he could be. That'd be a swell reason why he wouldn't want to see anybody or come out except at night. You just got to deliver these groceries. And don't forget the money. A dollar and a quarter. Why do you hire me if you hate me so? Okay. But I still think it might be... I know. So he's the creeper. <laughs> or you just creep along with that... I mean, hurry up with that stuff. And then get back here and do the rest of your work. Dear God, I hate you. <laughs> I hope you die. Crusty little bastard probably knows somebody's well before. Hey, you pony keg, all right. Oh, it's just magnificent when the tall ships come into the harbor. Meanwhile, on Il Trovatore. <laughs> okay, let me see 23 Pestilence Way. Leave it outside. Hello, Dallas. How much? A dollar and a quarter. Here's a toenail. <laughs> Go away. Mm, have a nice day. Shucks, I guess no one likes me today. Is it me? Am I sending off hostile vibes? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, I really shouldn't do this when I'm on the crapper, but... <laughs> Ow. Man, this menu is hard to read. Let's see... Lobster, 24 bucks? Wow. Ah, oh, great. Eight o'clock coffee. God. You forgot my fruit brute cereal. Hmm? The Shroud of Turin. Doug, uh. say, uh, you might want to check the freshness on that mayonnaise. I got it out of the back. And Hey. <laughs> Should I have tipped him? Big Head Todd and the monster. <laughs> hey, take two. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay, okay, okay. Don't blow it. I got a real possibility of a free back break here. Remember to breathe. <sighs> a scene from Brothers Keeper. All right, relax. It's not something we haven't done a whole lot of times before. He's into it. Okay, you're there. There. Stay out of your own head now. Hands up to ten and two into the creeping position. A promising delivery career comes to an end. There's very little chance he flanked me. I can't imagine him doing that. Because if he did that, kind of... Hey, your hand smells like pennies. And some prune juice, Metamucil, Correctol, Fibercon, Goeys, and that... Oh, thank, thank you. you. you weathered bitch. Yes, anyway. Boy. You know, by itself, that doesn't establish much. <laughs> no. You'll send Jimmy over with the rest of that order, won't you, Mr. Haskin? Yes, I will. If he ever gets back from that errand, I sent him on. Mm -hmm. He's been gone nearly two hours. Well, that's the boy for you. These days, they can't seem to keep their minds on their work. Good day, Mr. Haskin. Good day, Miss Hart. Let's go out and be crotchety sometime. Oh, man, she's a fine piece of woman. Oh. God is dead. Good. Ah, I forget it. Ah. Look at that philanthropist laid. It's always a philanthropist. Rock stars and philanthropists. Yep. Wow. Irma Bombeck has a good point. How about Captain Flash or Captain Rocket? Captain MJ Donnelly just doesn't do it for a superhero. 
How are things in homicide? Good morning, Captain. What makes you think it's good? You. But does that beaming puss of yours mean that you have some good news? Uh uh-uh. uh. Bad news. It's on the way. I just saw Commissioner Salisbury parking his car outside. The mayor's secretary is with him. Just thought I'd let you know, give you at least two minutes to think up a good story. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lieutenant. Come back here. Mm. Who, me? Yeah, you. Who put the cookie in the uh, cookie jar? After all, I assigned you to the Creeper murders. And I need a partner in this little game of buck passing. By the way, just what have you done toward apprehending the murderer? Are you kidding? You know what we've done. We're operating the biggest dragnet in the history of crime in this city. Well, it isn't big enough. You haven't caught the Creeper yet. Uh, I want every available man in the Homicide Bureau put to work on this case immediately. Now, wait. I don't want excuses. I want the Creeper in jail within 24 hours. Or there'll be some changes made around here. Ah, midgets! <laughs> Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Mr. Parkinson. Good, Good morning. morning, Captain Donnelly. Uh, you're looking fine, Commissioner. No, and how's no, the no. missus? I trust she's feeling as good as you look. She's not. She's scared to death, like every other woman in town. Mm. Since wholesale murder has the police department stymied. I presume you refer to the Creeper murders? You presume right. I've come here to find out why a killer can terrorize an entire city while the police department twiddles its thumbs. Oh, well, now, I wouldn't exactly call what we were doing thumb-twiddling. Rochester. And just what would you call it, Captain? thumb wrestling. His honor, the mayor, would like to know. Now, if you gentlemen will please sit down, I'll try to bring you up to date on the creeper. We are up to date on the creeper. Hmm? We know that you haven't arrested him. And his honor, the mayor, delivered an ultimatum to Commissioner Salisbury this morning. He demanded action within 24 hours. If none is forthcoming... He will ask for the commissioner's resignation. And I'm telling you, Donnelly, if you don't turn up something to quiet public opinion before tomorrow, your job won't be worth a... Get his puffer! Exactly what I was telling Lieutenant Gates when you came in. Wasn't I, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. You were. And I'll pass the, bu- the word right on down the line till every man in the department knows exactly where this <laughs> thing stands. Off. You can depend on me, gentlemen. Very well. Shall we go, commissioner? We represent the lollipop guild. The lollipop How'd I do? Great. We're still a good team. That was a long, dull scene. Congratulations. <laughs> Homicide, Captain Donnelly speaking. Huh? No, oh, you're looking for armed robbery. Okay, okay, we'll look into it. Everybody in town's got creeper Who was it? <laughs> Some grocer down near the waterfront. Oh. Thinks the creeper might have knocked off his delivery boy. So? The kids went away from store for three creeper, hours. Creeper. Oh, you just have time to get down there before lunch. Whoa, 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 how long are you going to be on that phone there, Tex? Because I'm expecting an important phone call from Sherry, my realtor, about the duplex and all. Yeah, that's great. But listen, Tom, I had the idea, hey, we have a phone. (laughs) Why not call someone like my old girlfriend, Carla, and she could help us get down from here? That's a cute idea, too, Mike, but uh, keep it around 30 seconds, will you? Because Sherry's probably trying to get a hold of me. Yeah, whatever, fine. Hello? Oh, hi, Carla. Hey, it's me, Mike Nelson. Mike! I'm good. Hey, listen very carefully. This is going to sound weird, but I'm trapped up in space. It's the oh, weirdest hang thing. on, Mike. My little boy Matthew wants to say hi to you. Well, no, this is oh, kind of important. Matthew. Say hi to Mike. Hi, Matt. Say hi, Mike. Uh, hi. Say hi, Mike. Hi. 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 Could you give the phone back oh, now, Mike, please? Didn't play Matt. Today. Uh, that's, awesome. that's great, Matt. That's terrific. Sounds like fun. Hey, could you give the phone back to your mom now? Great. Uh huh. Give the phone. Give the phone back, Matt. Mike, Matt, let me take care of this. Your... Let me take care of this. Matt, can you hear me? Yeah. Listen, son, hang up the phone. I'm trying to get a hold of my realtor, Sherry. Okay. Hey, bye. No, Thank don't you. hang up, Matt. No, great. Now look what you've done. This is our chance to get down. We got movie friends too. Crying out loud. I do the best stir fry. You are in for a treat, my little delivery boyfriend. Hey, wake up, sunshine. Oh, we used the last set of clean sheets. Oh no, the Apaches. This is a noisy apartment. Here's number 23, Donnelly. But be quiet. We have to sneak up on him. (laughs) So, I got time to snag a sturgeon? Come on, here, boy. Here. Forgot about the realtor coming over. We'll just push the body under the rug and give it a lick and promise. And uh, <laughs> I hate to leave my boards behind. 
Yeah, door knocked out here for Wellstone once. Hey, it's KT May. Hello. Come on, open Beans. up in there. Beans. Oh no! Beep, beep. Alert, intruder, alert, intruder. Hmm. Not a really good plant house. Yeah, the crawl space is a little wet, but there's a sump pump. <laughs> I hate these shared bathrooms. Look. Can it wait? I'm fixing eggs. Does this body mean anything? Okay, I looked. Happy. The creeper again. Yep. From the looks of that coffee pot, he can't be far away. He never leaves half a pot. Men will start combing the neighborhood. I'll have a look around here. Okay. Where are those filters? Oh, God, the creeper's bedpan. Yeah. Well, that does it. My investigation's complete. I must say, you're one good-looking man. Who loves you, baby? A little zit there. I don't know what that is. Hi, guy. Jeez, look at all these Lancome products. These three saw a popular trio recently. Popular trio still under investigation. Oh, man, yeah, they were popular. So full of life. It was great to be around them. Well, better look for more clues. Oh, he sure is into coupons. Look at this. He puts applesauce in his meatloaf. That's a terrific idea. Yep, yeah, sure is creeping there. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn, where's that northern? I had it chained up right here. No, I won't talk to you anymore. Well, looks like we've combed the area. <laughs> I'm going to call headquarters for more men. We'll give the whole district a house-to-house -house canvas. That'll take a very large canvas, sir. Say, anybody know where the A.J. Fisk and Sound Sausage Company is? Hmm. And who is walking on my bridge? Boss delighted. Where is Olive Loaf? People demand. Boy, you know, murder clues may lead to Creeper. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the thin man arrives at the White House. And his brother. Nice knockers, huh? <laughs> I love that joke. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Trick or treat for UNICEF. Good evening. Good evening. Are you Mr. Clifford Scott? Yes. Captain Donnelly, Homicide Bureau, and Lieutenant Gates. Mind if we come in? Not at all. Come right in. Thank you. We were wondering why you weren't wearing a hat. I'm Dewey at home. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I believe you can give us some important information, if you will. I don't know what this is all about, but I'll be glad to help any way that I can. Shall we go into the living room? Thank you. It's just this way, about a mile. Oh. What is it, Clifford? I don't know yet, dear. These gentlemen are from the police department. They say they'd like to ask me some questions. Captain Donnelly, Lieutenant Gates, my wife. How, How do, do you do? do? You can help us, too, Mrs. Scott. I? Yes. I take it you've read about the murders committed by a character the newspapers call the Creeper? Why, yes. Well, we stumbled onto something this morning. We stubbed our toe. It leads me to believe you can help us identify him. You mean it's someone we know? I think so. What was your class at Hampton University? 1930. You were in that class too, weren't you, Mrs. Scott? Yes. And you had a classmate named Hal Moffat. Remember him? He was a good friend of ours. He sat on a toffet. We have an idea that Hal Moffat is the Creeper. How? No, he couldn't be. We found this in his shack, among some of his other things. He apparently had been keeping it for some time. Let me see here. I'm Hal Moffat. I'm the Creeper. What do you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember when this was taken. It was right after a football game. Yes. It was the day Hal almost won the game single-handed. <laughs> Two people from that college were killed by the Creeper. <laughs> Professor Cushman and a woman named Joan Bemis. We knew Joan quite well. Uh. I thought you might have. When did you last see Hal Moffat? He was eating curds and whey. I seen him for years. <laughs> no, he just disappeared. Disappeared? Well, none of us has seen him since his last year in college. You see, something happened to Hal. What? He graduated. He was probably our best friend. If I'm thinking of the right guy. In his last year at Hampton, he was captain of the football team. Here we go. In the final game of the season, we were playing Rensselaer for the conference championship. The sports writers picked Hal for All-American honors. And if they had any doubt about it, the game he played against Rensselaer won their votes. Harpo! Hal had a quick temper. 
but it certainly paid off on the football field. Sieg Heil! He was all over the place, blocking, backing up his line, passing Rensler dizzy, and up to the fourth quarter, had scored three touchdowns and brilliant broken field runs. 14 RBIs and three assists. Three times he converted for extra points. Score stood Hampton 21, Rensler 7. Okay, great, right there. No, move it. No, you moved it. No, right. Uh, hang on, I'm having a private flashback right now. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Hal's temper had made him a lot of enemies, but this year everyone was his friend. He was one of the best players Hampton ever produced, and we were proud of him. Uh, sir, this is really neat, but could we get back to the murder case? Hal and I were very close friends. Mm -hmm. There was only one catch to it. We were both in love with Virginia. And to complicate matters, Joan Bemis was madly in love with Hal. Uh, football! <laughs> we were going to celebrate that night. The four of us. We each had patty melts. I had a date with Virginia, but Hal did a little conniving. He picked her up in his car and didn't arrive until the evening was half over, leaving Joan and me to amuse ourselves by staring at each other across the table. Good pickles, huh? Of course he had a story ready when they did get there. He always had a story. And knowing his temper, I seldom challenged him. Hi. What do you mean by that? I'm uh, sorry we're late, folks, but I had some car trouble and couldn't seem to find out what it was. And all of a sudden it started just like that. You know how it is, Cliff, old boy. Hal did the scoring again, just like he did on the field that afternoon. So tell me about this cat poster. Apparently the cat's hanging on a stick. <laughs> Jag off. Jerk. Al and I were roommates. He was the athlete and I was a scholar. Let's make lots of money. He helped him a lot with his studies. It's an old college custom keeping football stars eligible to play. It wasn't because Hal was dumb. But he was. He was just too impatient to study hard. On the football field, he got action quick. <laughs> but you can't stiff arm your way through a flock of chemistry problems. Damn. Yep, I got a very heavy date with Virginia right after chemistry class. And boy, have I got plans. Did I ask? Al did some boasting. And I did some thinking. Yeah, then he made the mistake of asking me to check his chemistry answers. I saw a chance to keep him from having that date with Virginia. His answers were right. But I fixed that. <laughs> I gave him a set of wrong ones. And he memorized them very carefully for the verbal quiz scheduled for the next day. So you're a big, fat jerk. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid are all catalytic agents. Very good, Mr. Scott. But I didn't ask. Uh, Mr. Moffat. Sit on my toffet. <laughs> Sulfuric acid, when combined with H4N7, will form a solution of hydrochloric acid. Mr. Moffat, I have never spanked a senior before, until now. You'd better remain after class, Mr. Moffat. You seem to have everything wrong today. Class dismissed. They'll never suspect me. Hal realized that I had crossed him up. He was accustomed to being a winner, <laughs> never a loser. He was plenty angry because I'd outsmarted him, and he showed it. I'm gonna grow an ugly face and kill you! <laughs> Professor Cushman put Hal to work on a difficult experiment that would keep him busy the rest of the afternoon. And just to needle him, I walked Virginia past the laboratory window. Oh, you're a good friend. The look he gave us told me I'd better get away from there quick. He could never tell what he'd do when his temper flared. Come on, let's go throw cigarette butts at the monkeys. Huzzah! Out, vile jelly! Am I okay? Uh, yeah, I think I am. This time it brought tragedy. Do you want the lab notes? We visited him in the hospital and tried to talk to him. Jeffrey. But he wouldn't answer. Jeffrey. He just lay there, yeah. staring up at us. Yeah. The doctors told us that the chemicals might affect certain glands and nerves. And if they did, his features would never be normal again. And you haven't seen him since then? No, he left the hospital after several weeks and just dropped out of sight. Did the doctors tell you anything else about him? I mean about his mental state. Oh, yes. He was mental. One of them did say that Hal was pretty bitter when he left. Yeah. I wonder why. A thing like that could very easily have affected his mind. And if he is the creeper, I guess that's what happened. You mean he may have killed Professor Cushman just because he kept him after class that day? Mm. Possibly. I'm not telling. A mental quirk can develop into an extreme case of paranoia. So quit looking at me. You say he was in love with you. Oh, I don't know. I never took Hal very seriously because Clifford and I were in love with each other. It's over now, but... I see. You... Well, thank you very much for the information you've given. It was long-winded and pointless, but thank you. Say, do you have a statue I could borrow? Oh, I'm going to have your place watch day and night for a while, Mr. Scott. You mean he might come here? Well, you never can tell what a man will do when his mind's affected. Better to be on the safe side. He might hold you responsible for what happened. After all, you gave him the wrong answers. Yes, I did. Well, now, don't let it upset you. We won't let anything happen. 
And you will explain to Mrs. Scott about my men covering the place? She might think they're prowlers. Surely. Good night. Good night. Is there anything I could have done differently? Often walk down the street before. Feet stayed, need pavement before. House street where live. I thought I'd look up and it'd remind me of something, but no. Yes, I'll join band. Evening, Creeper. Hi, person. River wide. Oh. <laughs> ah, the Joan Rivers collection. Man, how do those things get off the ground? Heavily encrusted. I'm going to get a big facial. <laughs> now, how do you. What? What is this? What? What? Oh, it's a door. Be right with you. Gotta lay some cable. Have a bra fitter on tonight? See something you like, mister? Yeah, but it's not on menu. <laughs> I'm looking for a ring to make my hand look dainty. <laughs> That's a very fine piece, my friend. A very reasonable. You can have it for... 35 uh, uglies. I mean, I, I dollars! <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. Uh, I was just going to say that you can buy it for practically nothing. <laughs> How much? Well, uh, to you, twelve dollars and a half. Jeez. I'll take it. I'll pay you for it tomorrow. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't do business that way. You don't trust me? No. In my business, it's, it's too expensive. Is he Dvorak? Put it back. I'll call the police. <laughs> okay, tomorrow's fine. 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 Evening, Creeper. Hey, fella. Wow. You know, the world sure was dingy back then. <laughs> Just like Toots Thielman. Thank you. Rondo Hatton in Barefoot in the Park. <laughs> I wonder what the odds are that I live here. Who's there? It's me. Mr. Creeper. Oh, I'm glad. No, I take that back. Come in. Oh, boy, what a day I've had. I gotta say, I'm all creeped out. <laughs> I was worried about you. I mean, those men who were after you. Thanks for helping me. I brought you something. Oh, thank you. What is it? Why don't you look at it? You see, I'm blind. Lemon Jefferson. Blind? You lead me on. I thought you might have guessed it last night. What did you bring me? Here. It's a Viewmaster. Hmm. Did you keep the receipt? Oh, it's beautiful. I can tell. Please, let's sit down. Whoa, does he strain krill through his mouth? It's a big baleen. Whoa. So, do we make out now, or...? Why were those men chasing you? They thought I'd done something, but it wasn't my fault. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. Creeper, may I call you Creep? I don't know if I should accept this from you. You haven't even told me your name. It's Hal. Well, mine's Helen. We're engaged now, right? Last night you seemed surprised because I wasn't afraid of you. What's wrong, Hal? Should I be afraid? Might be a good idea. What else is? Well, now I what? am. I can't tell you. It's a surprise. Do you want to be friends with me? Gee, I don't know. I have so many. Well, okay. Sure. <laughs> You're nice to me. And no one else is. Is that it? The coy Rondo Hatton. I think I understand. You're a hideous murderer. When you've been blind as long as I have, you learn to see through your senses. I sense through my sweat glands. I can't explain it exactly, but you get a feeling about people when you meet them. Mm-hmm. You see a picture of them in your mind. I'm picturing a grouper. Not just what they look like, but what they really are. And what size hat they wear. You see them much more clearly than you do with your eyes. No, you don't. Maybe that's why they say looks are deceptive. No, they're not. Do you know what I mean? You're smothering me. Yes, I know. I'd like to help you if you'd let me. You can. How? Just let me come to see you. Of course I want you to. I'm alone most of the time, except when I give piano lessons. Or when I'm at umpire school. I have such a good idea of you now. 
But if I could touch your face, then... No, don't do that. Why not? I don't want you to. I'm breaking out, okay? Hal. You're wearing Draka Noir, aren't you? Hal. Open the pod bay door, Hal. Hmm, Miss Helen Creeper. Hmm. Refuse to use articles. A well, police wrong. Or your money back. The haunting creeper theme. Come on, I didn't mean to break it. I thought it was in park. Well, good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Mr. Parkinson. I thought you'd be dropping by about this time. So, you're sitting here playing gin rummy with another creeper murder on the front page of the newspapers. I think better when I'm enjoying my hobby. I'm a pigeon fancier. <laughs> what is uh, this scene for? To me, Donnelly. We told you. I know, I know. You told me already that you wanted the creeper arrested within 24 hours. Well, gentlemen, he's still at large. Now, I suppose the bear and yourself have decided to take over personally. Mm -hmm. No doubt you'll have the killer in custody in 10 minutes flat. I'll just let the newspapers know that it's in your lap. Uh, just a minute, Captain. Let's not be hasty about this. You don't mean that His Honor the Mayor wouldn't relish the job, that you wouldn't like to take over? That's beside the point. The entire city is up in arms, and the creeper goes on killing people. Now, I'm a reasonable man, Donnelly. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it, Commissioner. It's Uncle Charlie. Now that the pressure's hey. off, I can let you know that we have the first definite clues to the identity of the creeper. Who is it? Yes, who, who is it? I said clue, gentlemen. When I'm certain, I'll give you the lowdown, and I believe it'll be soon. That's all I can tell you is the moment. Now, if you will excuse me, I have Gates on a triple blitz. I'm beginning to lose my trust in government. <laughs> it's nice to know that Noel Coward's in charge of the police force. Why don't you let him know about the newspaper clippings? What? And have those publicity hounds filling the front pages with a lot of stuff that would scare the creeper right out of town? <laughs> mm. Oh, that sex was very serviceable and reliable, thank you. Well, hello, Creeper. Hi, Creeper. Hi. Just what did this take place in Alaska? There's no daylight. Can't believe she makes me go outside to smoke a cigarette. I better go drop off the instructions for the brooch. Welcome to the Creeper Arms Apartments. Not a very good singer, is she? The song's got something four. to do with it, too. Yeah. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. That's fine, Dorothy. Just fine. That'll be $600. She's coming along very nicely, Mrs. Arbringer. She is? You'll be playing the classics before you know it. I don't want to play that stuff. I want to play boogie boogie. Oh, <laughs> you can play that, too, as a hobby. But first, you must master the things that are solid. But boogie woogie is solid. Dear, put your music away. We're going home now. She gets that from her father. He plays hot trumpet in the fireman's band. Wow. Come along, dear. Why do you not open door? We'll oh. see you next week at the same time. I'll see that she practices like you told her to, Miss Helen. I'll be right in the groove. Oh, Dorothy. Good night. Good night. Hey, fella, why the long face? <laughs> oh, now, come on. I'm, now, I'm sorry, I begged you not to do that. No, <laughs> that hurts. If the hands of time. <laughs> the real problem is adventure. Well, you know. Hiya, Mayor. Uh, you want to use a different fingering not to break up the phrasing. Uh, look, Helen, other girls in the sorority asked me to talk to you about your incessant piano playing. She can't hear him? She's the most inefficient blind person I've ever seen. Boys, you think you're God's gift to pianos, don't you? Who oh, is it? Hello. Oh, it's you, Hal. I didn't hear you come in. I didn't knock. I creeped. Are those men after you again? No, I was listening outside. When those people left, I just walked in. <laughs> Please sit down. I'm going to call the police. <laughs> You make a living teaching kids to play? Oh, yes, I managed to get along. Well, how do you get into that kind of thing? It's tough doing that, you being like you are. I love music, and I like teaching it to others. 
I don't find my blindness too much of a handicap. Yeah, me, I'm a killer. Won't you ever be able to see? No, now lay off! The doctor told me a year ago that there might be a chance if I had an operation. Why don't you do it? Oh, it would be very expensive. And the insurance company considers it cosmetic. A lot of money. So much that I don't even think about it anymore. If you could see, you'd... Um, nah, I can't take anything right now. What are now. you going to say, Hal? Nothing. Just where's your little boy's room? What's wrong, Hal? Why don't you want me to see you? Are you afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid. But why? You'd know if you could see me. Ah. Well, if I'm not afraid of you now, why would I be if I could see you? <sighs> you would be. Everybody else is. Good. Then it's probably just as well that I'm blind. Okay, perfect. Don't you have any idea how much that operation would cost? Oh, the doctor said it would be two or three thousand dollars at least. But I'd rather have a car. Oh, no. Hal. Yeah? If you'd just let me touch your face, I'm sure that... Why, it feels like air. Man, he must really be a woofer. Woof, woof. I like myself. I am beautiful. I like myself. I am beautiful. Well, what's this? A zit? Hey, you must know how he feels, huh, Servo? <laughs> hey! That's <laughs> yeah, pretty Thanks. good. Yep. Sorry about all this, Mrs. Lott. Really a shame, isn't it? And the creepers branched off into stalking. Hmm. The creeper must approach the house cautiously so as not to startle the house. <laughs> Save the coupons? Sure, how do you think I got this great house? <laughs> I love that. Well, I... I think the movie's stuck. Here, me and Hydrangea Bush. <laughs> Brando Hatton in True Lies. Showing the same great form that allowed him to rush 200 yards against Yale. Nah, I don't think she's gonna come out and give me that goodnight kiss. Turn on the hose and stick it in the mail slot. <laughs> wow, what a great set of lamps. <laughs> Jeez, I keep smoking the same cigarette. Why can't burn it real till you have a normal open house? Again, it's the Cheyenne Social Club. <laughs> He can't decide if he's a creeper, a peeper, a stalker, a walker, a backbreaker. In today's job market, you can't afford not to diversify. We're into some deep creep in here. Yeah. Well, no one showed up for my 1870s party. <laughs> I insisted on separate bedrooms. There's no reason why my husband needs to be anywhere near me. I could have swore I had an appointment to show her a vacuum cleaner. No, I'm an old friend. Why don't I just go to the front door? Creeper. Creeper. Well, it's not a name I would have chosen for myself, but it seems to fit. Wow, these cigarettes are really addicting. I wonder if they know about that, huh? <laughs> uh, disgusting habit. I mean, I got my own problems, but jeez. Ooh. Her hair looks like something you'd pound meat with. <laughs> Sure, I can kill a guy with my bare hands, but I can't open a Pella window. No way. This has got to be by far his longest creep. It's like one of those all-day super-endurance ultra-creeps. <laughs> creep. There he goes. They should get kids going on these things. should have bought at least eight more cartons. <laughs> For the creeping part of his job, it'd get quite tedious. Come on, creeper, get off the pot. <laughs> Man, I just love these things. Oh, I love six. I gotta get a carton of these for my pregnant wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, this isn't my normal method of creeping, but sometimes you gotta improvise. What I love, really, is that they're so good for you. Hey, that guy's not a bad creeper himself. No. I don't just want to be known as a creeper, I want to be known as the creeper. No, he's gonna steal the canned pizzas for the state fair. Creeper, 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 creeper. Oh, naked! I've never seen. Okay, this is gonna be great, Mike. I'm gonna need your help. See that monitor down there? Could you lift that up on the desk? Oh, hey, there is a monitor mm -hmm. down here. Well, look at that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Cambot, if you could zip ahead in the experiment to that part we talked about with the guy. And the, no, 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 not that guy. That, not, well, he, no, a little forward, forward. Yep. That, 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 that guy, that guy, that guy. Yep. Now, as I believe we've mentioned already, this guy looks quite a bit like former Republican presidential candidate Thomas Tom Dewey. Dewey. Yeah. Dewey. Again, he looks like Thomas Tom Dewey. Dewey. Yep, right. Got it? Yeah, right. Great. It looks like Great. Tom Dewey. Yeah. Uh, Mike, if you could uh, lift that picture. See this picture back here? Just lift that picture hey. of Thomas Dewey up right. again. Yeah, yeah, Tom Dewey. There you go. <clears throat> All right. Okay, now listen. Here's what got me going. There's this old song called The Crimes of Tom Dooley. Uh huh. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. You know how that goes. Oh, right, sure. yeah. Yeah, I think I, I see where you're headed with it. Well, maybe. <clears throat> this is going to be fun. So, what got me to thinking was what would happen if instead of singing Hang Down Your Head, Tom Dooley, you were to go ahead and sing Hang Down Your Head, Tom Dewey. Tom Dewey. Hang down your head and cry, hang down your head, Tom Dewey. Poor boy, you're bound to die. There, you see? Well, that's great, Crow. You make a real interesting point, and I think we can all see Well, let's go ahead and do it then, huh? Well, I think you just did. Well, Tom, if you would sing the name if you want, and Mike, I believe it helps if you point to the picture. <clears throat> you're, you're probably right. Okay, great. Hang down your head. To Tom Dewey. Wee! Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head. Tom Dewey. Crow, what is your point here? Well, come on. Use your imagination. Why would Thomas Dewey have to hang down his head, huh? Well, um, I mean, uh, why would he be bound to die, huh? See? It's the juxtaposition of the Wango. two names, and there's endless examples of this sort of fun. Uh, hey, here's another one. Hang on, Snoopy. Snoopy, hang on. Not Sloopy. No, it's Hank Kamba. Join me, Snoopy. Snoopy, hang on. You know, a creeper with decent manners would have phoned ahead. Mm -hmm. This would have moved along much faster if he'd been called a jaguar or the cheetah. <laughs> nice pad, but I prefer my river shack. Mrs. Bates, can Norman come out and play? Oh, no, now his creeping has just turned into wandering. Rocks move faster than this guy. Come on. Now, is she in Chip's room or Robbie's? Doors, you mock me. You know I've never been able to run you. <gasps> Look at that. She's using a harmonica on her nails. Joan? Hi. Say, do you have those chem notes? Hello, Virginia. I'm hunting wabbits. Uh... Who are you? You don't remember me. No, I... Oh, right, you're my husband, of course. You're not Hal. Yeah, I've changed a little since I last saw you, haven't you? Your face. Yeah, like you're a total fox. <laughs> it frightens you, doesn't it? Yes, I can't believe it. <laughs> this is what you and Cliff did to me. But we never knew. So, friends? Yeah. You're afraid of me, just like all the others. You've even got a detective outside now to protect you from me. They insisted on guarding the house. They told us you were the creeper, that you'd killed all those people. Joan, Professor Cushman, and the others. 
I need some Carmex now. I need some money. A lot of money. Please see the bursar. I'll do anything I can to help you. But we don't keep very much money in the house. Cliff's doing all right for himself. <laughs> you probably got a lot of jewels. Good evening, Mr. Scott. Hello. I'm sorry you have to stay out here. Well, that's all right, sir. It's my job. Good night. Good night. By the way, you mind if I smoke out here? All right. Keep quiet. Virginia. There's Cliff. Tell him to come on up. He's not keeping quiet. I'm up here, Cliff. Okay, dear. Oh, man, she's in the bedroom. I can't believe it. I haven't had anything in weeks. <laughs> wow. Hello, darling. I defeated Truman today. What's the matter? Hello, Cliff. It's Hal. A.K.A. the Creeper. A.K.A. the Brute. Hal. Yeah. It's been a long time, Cliff. Yeah. I don't blame you for not recognizing me. Cliff, they were right. He is the Creeper. He killed those people. Isn't it exciting? Why, Hal? What happened to you? Look at my face. Yes, but that's what happened to me, thanks to you. Awkward. Why did you come here? I need money. I told him we'd be glad to do anything we could to help him. Well, yes, of course. Get those jewels of mine in the wall safe. But, all right. They're in here. Oh, great. All my gallery mags are in here. So, what else have you been up to? You've been creeping a lot? Let's see now. One... One, one. I'm not giving you my Whitey Ford rookie card. I'll take it. But it's locked. I keep the key in the desk drawer. I won't need a key. But hell, there's personal papers in it. Things of no value to you, but very valuable to me. I'd like to keep them if you don't mind. Okay. Unlock it. <laughs> Remember, I'm watching you. Ah, the flexible burglar. <laughs> so, hell, you going to the reunion next month? Uh, here, the gang's getting back together. Joan Bemis is bringing a banjo. <laughs> She's a fun. It's chemistry answers. You won't need that. <laughs> Here's the jewelry. Put up your hands. You. Oh, man, right in the mess. Ow. <laughs> the detective in. <laughs> Poor guy. I'm sorry, Hal, but I had to. Uh, I know, you're mad, aren't you? Just like when I deformed your face. You're mad. Kiss me, you brute man. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott! Do you have a cigarette? <laughs> Our poor fellow probably needs to use the bathroom. What's going on? I heard a shot. It's Hal Moffat. He's upstairs. My husband shot him. Was he on his Toffet at the time, ma'am? Stop that. This is really going to cut into my smoking time. <gasps> well, I... Claire. Huh? Maybe... I can't take his last cigarette. Hmm. No. Well, good luck, however, it turns out. Calling cars 41 and 53, District 5. Guess cars who? Cars 41 and 53, District 5. Proceed at once to 500 block, Cottage Grove Avenue. Investigate a 341. Write this down. Proceed with caution. This job is by the creeper. Upcaps are alerted. Oh, it's right around the corner. So this is a Persian rug. There's another one. Hmm? Oh yeah. Oh mama. He's yeah, been boy. hit all right. Oh baby. Now, maybe he's been hurt badly enough to slow him up. Captain Donnelly? Yeah. He just got a flash on the radio. They've traced him to the tenement district over by Grand Avenue. Oh well, maybe. Hey, you know what I think? Yeah, I know. You're a large pink smelly man. Oh boy. This could mean an early and unexpected end to his creeping career. Mm. Yeah, the creeper is on the 15-day DL. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew! Trust us. <laughs> oh, God. Well, how the hell did she ever get a piano up here? <laughs> okay, once I get to her, I have to ask her to move to the first floor. Oh, they're going to visit Mr. Cotter. Um, hello? 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 Anybody there? Is it dark? Uh, uh, hello? You know, one thing you have to say for this creeper, he really opened the door for other creepers. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, in the center ring, 
The Creeper will now attempt the high thing. <laughs> yeah. you know. oh, should have called her and told her to meet me at the drugstore. Man, such a nightmare for all Creepers to blow out a knee or get shot like this. So, he's in pain and it's taking him a long time. <laughs> so, mostly like before then. I wish I wore my gym clothes. Oh, God, my trick groin. Boy, he's had several injuries that don't really help his chances with women at all. <laughs> oh, it feels good just to not creep. Aha! Uh -huh. And that's significant because... Uh, oh, I bet I look like hell. Honey! My face is as big as ever, and someone shot my sizzler off. <laughs> Helen. Ah, don't do that! Hal, you startled me. You came in by the fire escape. Are you in trouble again? No. I've got something for you. A transformer I got with my Happy Meal. <gasps> Steelies. This stuff will bring enough for that operation. You mean my calf implants? Where did you get these? Hal, you're hurt. I hear blood. I'm all right. You have that operation right away. And can it wait till morning? Hal, wait. I'd like an appraisal of these jewels. Well, they came from a wounded guy with a hole in his groin who wouldn't let me touch his face. Uh, this is a daredevil lure. Yes, ma'am. It'll take a few minutes. Would you care to wait? Yes, I'll wait. Okay, go ahead and wait then. Start waiting right over there. This stuff is hotter than a Pasadena tennis court. <laughs> wow, he got his name legally changed. What do you know? Astoundingly little detail in this robbery detail. And one rock that might be an agate. That's an odd recipe. Oh, well, Mrs. Robinson, I, I, I got the room. <laughs> Get me to police. What did he say when he gave you these jewels? He told me to sell them and use the money for an operation on my eyes. Uh, didn't you think that was a little funny? Mm -hmm. I started to ask him about them, but he left before I had a chance. Don't you realize you can get yourself into a lot of trouble protecting a criminal? Let me put it this way. Have you ever seen Chained Heat? Well, I think you can call him that. Mm -hmm. Back me up on this, Roy. I believe it. Didn't you know the police were after him? No. Not even that first night when they came to your room? Mm. I thought they were just some men. With badges and guns. He never told me. No. No, I guess he wouldn't. I knew he was in some sort of trouble, but I didn't realize it was with the police. I mm. thought he was pregnant. What has he done? He has crept. Murder. Ah, right. At wholesale. Good prices on murder. happens to be the creeper. Not my creeper. The creeper. Oh, maybe you'd better sit down. By the way, am I showing too much cleavage? He was so nice to me. He gave me a cheap brooch and everything. I just can't believe this about him. Well, believe this, sister! Yet sees things, decided cannot. <laughs> Sells rights to Universal. <laughs> The friendship of a boy and a killer whale. Extra, extra, blind girl confesses friendship with creeper killer. Read all about it. Blind girl confesses. He just told the whole story. Extra, extra, read all Great, about it. Right now I gotta buy up every paper in town. Blind girl all about the creeper. Extra, extra, get your late edition here. Blind girl tells all. Wow, Rick Astley is selling newspapers. Blind girl tells all. Read all about it. Get your paper here. Get your late edition. Creeper needs a clipping blind service. Let's see here, wonder how the Giants did. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Blind Girl tells all about Creeper. No, none of this would have happened if chemistry weren't required. Yep. Well, it looks like the Creeper's back in the game. Let's see what he can do with that new plastic groin. <laughs> the black hole alley of the entire movie. Yep, once again. What light, window break. That was our song, whatever the hell it is. 
Still hasn't gotten that phrasing right. Hey, maybe he's going to do a skin the cat. <laughs> no. Never before has the screen sizzled with such intense fire escape action. I really hope he doesn't uh, accidentally sneak in and kill Alicia De La Rocha. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ow! Wow. Right now, she's probably having coffee and sharing stories with Terry Gibb and Diane Shirk. Could be. <laughs> Why don't they just call this movie The Creeper? <laughs> Brute man, pa. That'd be really awkward if you walked in and her she was entertaining another big, ugly murderer guy. <laughs> she at least owes me an explanation. Oh, it's the preacher from the right stuff. She can't resist the great smell of brute man. You know, if you kind of morphed Joe Namath's features, you'd have this guy. Flex all, baby. Well, this movie comes full circle again. <laughs> Again. Excuse me, I'm from downstairs. Could you play through the headphones? Mm, <laughs> ah, she's really Gene Hackman dressed as a woman to trap him. Mm. For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself. Let's just fluff out it in the sides here. This is... Um, do you have any eyes? Are there people here? Is something happening? I'll be with in a minute. We changed our plan at the last minute and decided not to let him strangle you. Oh, this sucks. Oh, come on. Let's not make a federal case out of it. Get up. <laughs> that was a fine thing you did, Miss Page. Helping us trap the killer. I wonder how he feels about it. He trusted me. Wanted to help me. Yeah. Don't let it get you. His mind had snapped. After all, he was a psychopathic killer. And by the way, I have some news for you. Your new eyeballs are in. I've been talking to certain people, and we... <coughs> they think you're going to get that operation. One of our sergeants does it part-time. Oh, wonderful. You look tired. Why don't you... May I see you home? Ooh. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks, but I've been getting up from chairs for years. Now she's going to find out how ugly he is. Well... Huh? There goes my pigeon. <laughs> Serial killers are wacky! <laughs> it's fine! <laughs> the producer's releasing corporation reminding you, don't fear the creeper. So I use a spark plug wrench. Hey, anybody seen Servo? No. Nope. Yeah, but if you're taking Okay, the, that's yeah. great. All right, well, uh, I want to read a letter here. We've got a nice... Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm late. Just there finished closing on my duplex. Oh, hey, you closed from here? Sure. Sherry took care of everything. She's a super sharp gal. What's a closing? Well, all I know is you sign a lot of papers and you write a lot of checks. And now you're a landlord. <laughs> yes, sirree, Martha. Oh, I'll get that. It's probably for me. Hello, Landlord Servo here. What can I do you for? Guy's going to jail. Yep. Well, none of my concern. Here's a letter from uh, Krista and Dana. Krista! And, uh, hey, put, Dana. Put this up on Still Store. Ooh, you can see that nice, nice silhouette they drew down there. It says, Hi, Mike, Tom Crow, Gypsy, yeah. and Cambot. How are you guys doing over there? Fine, we're, thank you. Hmm, yeah, we're so nice glad living. you uh, brought MST back to midnight. Our 70-year-old grandmother works all day, but she makes sure to stay no. up for MST 3000. Well, I don't know. Just don't flush the toilets. Uh, why don't you uh, put that uh, picture of uh, Nana up there on uh, Nana! the store? You can see she's giving the big thumbs up. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Well, do you so, really uh, need the water on? I mean, they must have shut it off for a good reason. All right. And I uh, got another one here from uh, Carolee Bailiff. Hmm? And she says, thank you for helping me to discover that good things did not vanish with the Reagan presidency. Well, what do you mean I'm on the Village Voice top ten worst landlords list? I just bought the place. It's in Pennsylvania, for crying out loud. Yeah, Philly. Hi. Mom and her new guy, Sandy, are just pulling up outside. I'm not really that upset about Sandy anymore. I just needed to figure a few things out. <laughs> After you, madame. Oh, Clayton, you're still up. Mm. Well, 
I'm going to go freshen up. Don't you go anywhere, Sandy. So, did you have a good time? Ah, sure, Clay. Let me tell you, my boy. Next time you got a little chicky on the line, just take her to Chili's, set the hook, and boom! I will do that. Uh, drink, Sandy? Sure. I don't think I'm driving anymore tonight. I'm there. Oh, Clayton. Yes, Mommy? Did you turn Sandy into the chicken of tomorrow? Hey, I guess I did. Clayton, if you... Well, if you don't watch out for me, who will? Oh, Mother, I love you. And I feel quite strongly toward you as well. Creeper, creeper, creeper. You give me the creeps. <laughs>